Hello, hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, wherever in the world you are. Uh, today we're having uh, Rod Waddell. I think I messed it up. No, you I didn't. Didn't? Oh, all right. Uh, today, uh, Rob has an amazing 30-year experience in marketing. He has worked for many big corporations. He knows his stuff. Um, and today, we're going to be talking about uh, Facebook ads and how to avoid costly mistakes. Uh, one of the main reasons why a lot of you have told me that, that are afraid to go into Facebook ads is that you keep hearing horror stories of somebody who goes, runs an ad, spends $3,000, and doesn't make a single sale. First of all, that person deserves to, you know, be shot in the head. But, you know, but it's one of the main fears. It's like going into the Facebook, making the mistakes to spend the money where you don't need to spend it. And that is what gives you the paralysis to start acting and start making some sales on your products. You know that in print on demand, Without ads, it's impossible to really scale your business. So I got you guys an expert on how to avoid those mistakes. And without me going in circles, I'm going to introduce Rob. And Rob, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me on. Um, so, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, year 38, I mean, now since I was tender age of 18, gone into marketing seriously. Um, my background, as you mentioned, uh, corporate. So I, I I grew up promoting and creating consumer brands, predominantly in the food market. So big number one brands, um, people may have heard of McCain Foods, you know, five billion, six billion Canadian dollars worldwide, you know, food, food products. And, you know, spent five great years there. And, you know, all the businesses I've worked in, it's about understanding right products, right price right place and that all comes up to what we talk about today as well and um you know the, the big thing is just understand your market understand the product that you put in front of your market so having put that all to one side my last 12 years i've spent mainly consulting but also coaching uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs um and business owners to actually make their marketing more effective you know a lot of people know a lot of stuff nowadays about marketing and it's you know often very difficult to, to separate the the rubbish from the good stuff. Um, I keep it quite simple, always strategic. Hopefully I can share some insights today uh, and just give you some key structure around how to think about running Facebook ads. But it also applies to other ad platforms as well. So although we've mentioned Facebook, um, it actually does apply to other formats, be it Google ads, be it YouTube ads, etc. Oh, yeah. So that's what we hope to cover today. Yeah, my, my, I mean, marketing is marketing, right? Uh, and uh... And I remember when I, I mean, I have a marketing degree, you know, in business and, and when you go to college, they teach you about marketing for big companies and they, they, you know, and everything is costly and everything is a, it's a process and everything is about, they don't simplify it enough. So I had to relearn how to do micro marketing, how to take a very small business, brand it and make it connect to, uh, a small group of people. I didn't, you know, when I started doing this, I always wanted like the millions of people reach. It's like, no, you don't need a million people to buy your product because you're a micro company. You need, you know, small numbers, thousand customers a month could be, you know, a lot of money. So me having to change that mentality and refocusing my brand to try to establish connection with the small people it was a difficult process, you know, because everything to me was corporate, 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 corporate. And I know a lot of people here are also in corporate and trying to adapt to now to start thinking about how to manage their own small business. Yeah. And you nailed that, you know? Yeah. The one thing I would say, and this is kind of, although we don't have a, you know, a, a, a big section to cover here is people don't research enough. You know, people talk about ready, fire, aim, and it's really, really good online. We can launch stuff quickly. But if you don't do the basic homework and don't understand whether actually your products is something that that consumer is going to buy, going to want, then you're wasting your time scaling to ads. And I tell every single client, don't spend a dime on ads unless you know that you've got something that people want. It's as simple as that. So your micro business example is perfect. Corporate, yeah, we used to spend thousands, if not tens of thousands doing research. We would get eight people in a room and we would show them an idea, show them a product, show them the price and see if they're interested in it. Then you do, you know, bigger scale, you know, testing of, of quantitative research. Would you buy it at this price? Would you buy it at that price? 
a lot of people don't check out those things. So I love what you said about, you know, micro businesses because you're talking to a small audience. Make sure it works before you spend any money on ads. Ads are there to amplify, to scale and to reach thousands more people very, very cost effectively. But don't, you know, don't do that unless you've got a process. Yes, well, definitely. Uh, and, I, and, and the other big, big thing, and, and I'm going to keep coming back to this, is test, test and test. Yeah. So the mentality and one of the things we'll go through, the mentality about running ads is the initial budget is a testing budget. Absolutely. If you don't think about it as a test and learn process, you will burn dollars. Absolutely. No doubt. Yeah. And it's a fact. I have seen that many, 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 many times where you, I mean, and I have probably done it myself as well, you know, where I said like, yeah, I'm going to go and put some money in this shirt. Let's see how he does. And of course, nobody, nobody, Nobody bites it because you know I didn't, I didn't go to the process of let's see how the market reacts to this first and let's see or is a niche that I didn't understand and I'm like oh I think this horsey is gonna sell great and I think this product and people that like horses are like that is not even you know something we are interested on because I didn't do the right research right and we all make those mistakes when we're starting and even when we are experienced we get arrogant sometimes and go and make mistake, mistakes based on assumptions of experience. Um, it's repetitive. Yeah, and it is. And, and I'm not saying you can't be successful. I mean, look at look at Apple. You know, if they spent all their time researching and asking whether consumers want this, actually, they wouldn't have innovated. So it is right to innovate. But let's face it, most days, e-com are about kind of established concepts. You know, even though you might have a new brand, you might have a, white, a new angle on it. They are fairly well established, you know, marketplaces. So I'm not saying that research is important for for everything. I'm just simply saying go in it with your eyes wide open. That's it. And uh, you know, certainly what I hope to kind of share is is kind of six key elements about how to think about putting your ads together and what you can do and what you can't do inside uh, the fantastic tool that Facebook gives you. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a learning process for sure. Um, so I mean, tell us what you got. Yeah, sure. I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna put up one one uh, one slide actually, sure. um, which is kind of like uh, the the headline of what we've uh, talked about. Uh, just make sure I can use Streamyard effectively. Here we go. Uh, okay. Hello, Jason. Here we go. Okay, so there you go. Now the only thing, obviously, I can't see the the screen now. So shout if you know, the slide's not showing or anything like that. It is. It is. It is fine. It's uh, so we can back <laughs> about advertising. Okay, so I use this acronym uh, with the extra C for facts. The facts about advertising. I'm going to kind of run through this real quick as kind of the key kind of six elements to be thinking about. There's loads of detail behind it, and perhaps once we run through that, then we'll go back to the top and go through some of the detail, and then you know make it a little bit more interactive. So I'm going to share some some ways to think about advertising, and then specific reference to uh, to Facebook if that's okay. And we'll we'll probably spend about uh, 20 minutes going through this, but please stop me if I'm going too fast or I start using jargon because having done this for long enough, I tend to to slip into it sometimes. Um, and we're going to go through six elements. Uh, the first one for F is think about the format and the placement. So assuming that you've got your product and, you know, you've got some photography shots of it and you know what you're going to be selling, then when constructing an ad, think about how it's going to be presented to the viewer. So is it on mobile? Because 80, well, 90 percent now of all ads are looked at on mobile. Um, we, we use it all the time. So think about vertical formats versus horizontal formats. Think about the placement. So within the Facebook advertising platform, when you actually choose where do I want my ad shown, if you think about it, um, the format of a vertical video is going to look very different to a little snippet ad that goes in the messenger feed. Now, if you're on your mobile phone and you go through your messenger chat, you will see ads. You see it's a tiny, tiny box. So you've got to think about that because basically if you don't think about – you know, the one key point that the consumer can see, you're wasting money spending spending money in Messenger. You know, if you start having a long amount of copy or the picture isn't crystal clear, it's such a small space, you, you're not going to make some errors there. So think about the format. Um, if I'm on desktop and you can target desktop specifically, and we'll come to, to targeting and audiences later, 
if you think about, I'm looking at this on a great big, lovely HD screen and I can take it all in. So I can watch a horizontal video ad um, and that works really, really well. But if I'm trying to communicate too much detail and the format, you know, isn't something that's going to suit that, then do that, you know, do that work up front, you know, look at your, your, your captions and look at the way that uh, either the image is presented or the copy is presented. And, and this is overriding everything I always you know, tell people. Put yourself in the audience's shoes, in the exact location, and look at what your reaction is to ads, and then think it, you know, reverse engineer it. It's really important. So format, vertical, horizontal, is it video, is it static? And where is it gonna appear? Is it in the news feed, or is it on the top right-hand corner, you know, right-hand side of your screen? Because the way you communicate your products and your offer will need to differ. And we'll come on to some, some clever ways around that when you come to test later on. So format and placement, think about the structure. Um, this is a huge subject, and I'll keep this quite simple, but A is for audience and targeting. So who are they? Where are they living, for example? Um, thinking about the targeting in particular, uh, nowadays when we build audiences linked into one of the other factors later on, which is cost, uh, sometimes it's actually better to start with a very broad, big audience with maybe only one or two factors of targeting. So you might pick an interest. So top of my head, let's say you're selling some jewelry. Yeah, you might have a good idea about who your ideal audience is. But, you know, to, to keep your costs effective, your targeting could be very broad. You might just choose one interest within the, in the Facebook ads platform that says, jewelry is an interest or you might just pick pick a brand you might you know pick a jewelry brand or even a fashion brand like chanel or something like that so you can actually go quite broad but then maybe put one layer on it you know so don't have 15 different interests and behaviors all in your targeting because if you've got some big categories in there the money will get allocated based upon the size so from my coaching experience although it's different to e-commerce let me give an example in your targeting, if you chose Tony Robbins and then you chose three other names for your targeting, you know, if Tony Robbins audience size is 11 million and the others are one million or, you know, half a million or 50,000 and you put your 10 or 20 dollars into that targeting, Facebook will simply allocate that based upon the size of the audience. And relatively speaking, 90 percent of your money will go to the biggest pool. So think about your audience and the targeting. And if you're not sure, run your first test broader than you perhaps think because your cost can be managed. But then think about layering, think about giving one or two only levels of interest targeting and test it and set up then three, four, sometimes five different separate audiences. So we'll go through this in a moment if we need to, but campaign is your first level, then your ad set where the audiences are built and then your ad itself. In the middle section, when you build your ad set and you choose the audience, I often recommend first phase is to build one campaign with perhaps, well, definitely more than two, two to five different audiences. And you can discreetly make those different to each other and then the ad itself. So, you know, putting $10, you know, behind one ad set and you then say, let's run three, $30 means you're going to test it in three different audiences and it will very quickly give you some indications about what's working well. So, you know, put, put some thinking into who you're targeting and don't, don't overload the targeting too quickly until you've got some winners. Uh, if nobody takes anything out of this entire uh, conversation we have here. When putting an ad together, I kind of don't care about the audience and the targeting, but I do absolutely care about does the creative, does the ad itself work? And I'll give you an example. Um, in the UK, if you run a ad in a mid-break TV show, soap opera, which is, you know, always traditionally had the biggest audience, you're, you're paying for a big audience and you're paying a lot of money for that one TV spot. The Super Bowl, exactly the same. Why do people pay so many millions and millions of dollars for a 30 second or 10 second ad in the Super Bowl? It's because you'll get to a massive audience and it's not for everyone. But if the ad itself is eye catching, mesmerizing and really, really emotionally engaging, 
then it kind of doesn't matter what the targeting is as long as those that it's relevant to love the ad. So I would say think about the creative, you know, think about it hard, think about it a lot and think about it from an audience's point of view. Because if I could only have one thing and one thing only, it would be a winning creative. The other stuff you can improve, you can learn as you go. But the creative, if you've got a crappy headline, if you've got a crappy image, if you've got a crappy message, it will fail. No matter how good you're targeting, no matter how low your costs are, your creative is singularly the number one you know, consideration in all of this. Put yourself in the audience issues. Which ads do you enjoy watching You know, relative to your marketplace? So I can't stress enough how important it is. And there's three elements to the creative, as anyone knows. You know, the headline, you know, what is the kind of the three lines of copy? What is the image? You know, how impactful is that image? And then thirdly is the call to action. You know, is it clear, is it concise, and is it motivating? Uh, touched upon it several times. Um, costs, people think advertising is expensive. Facebook is still, in my understanding, one of the cheapest places to run ads to. I mean, I used to spend millions running TV ads because it's such a big audience. Facebook, you can spend $5, $10 a day. You can even run video views at $1 per day to do your early stage testing, depending on what, you know, what kind of ad you've got running. The costs are made up of what you set the objective to be. So if you choose to have a conversion objective where you want someone to do something to, you know, to click the, the buy button to actually go to the store to purchase, or you want them to actually just opt into the, you know, the kind of the catalog or the learn more or something, you know, as a lower level, Facebook would deliver what you ask it to. So if you ask for a conversion, it is simply the most expensive way to do that. So the way to mitigate that, as I said earlier, you know, think about broader audiences because your cost per thousand reach, you know, what's called the CPM, <clears throat> cost per thousand, is based upon the size of the audience and how competitive is it to bid in there. Because one thing that people forget is that when you put your dollar or your ten dollars or your thousand dollars into an ad, you are simply bidding for advertising space. And people kind of forget this. Facebook have got thousands, millions of slots but it's a bidding market. You don't see it because it's all, you know, generally we tick the automated bidding section unless you really know what you're doing. So assume that you've, you've hit the automated uh, bidding button. If your ad creative is something which is highly engaging, it's a quality ad in the eyes of Facebook's algorithm, your costs will come down. If you go to a broader, bigger audience, your cost to reach those people is lower doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't accurately target if you know a precise audience, but it's kind of like the more tighter your targeting and the lower, the smaller the audience size will drive your costs up. If you drive a conversion ad to purchase, that can be five, well, it can be 10 or 20 times more expensive than running a different type of objective. So in the early stages, Think about a test budget. What are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to test the creative? Are you trying to test the offer? In which case, you may say, I'm not banking on getting a purchase here. I need to learn whether my targeting is correct. I need to learn if my creative is working. So you might just say, do you know what? I'm going to set the objective to keep my cost low as to an objective which we might call landing page views, just as an example, which is going to drive the traffic to the landing page, the site, but it's not going to guarantee a conversion. What you're doing is testing the front end. So, you know, several different ways to keep your costs relatively low. Then if you run that across three or four different executions, three or four different ad sets, you will quite quickly see the cost comparisons. So you might run a medium sized audience against a big one. Look at your cost per impression, your cost per reach, and then just determine where your budget is going to be best allocated. And then ultimately, the big thing here for e-com products is going to be, what is your return on investment? And, you know, I'm sure you're going to have something to say about this in a moment. But if you're selling a product at $3.99, you know, $4.97, a very low ticket, you're going to struggle to make a profit to pay for the ads. So ideally in e-commerce, you might want to be targeting, you know, a sales purchase value between, let's say, $60 and $100 because it might cost you $10 for that customer. 
Now, you're going to get that return if they buy more than once. You're going to get that return over time. You can you know, retarget them later on. You can get them to the email list. But, you know, if you're, if you're going to pay $10 to get a customer, but your revenue is only $5, it doesn't take a rocket science or even me to tell you, actually, that's not going to generate profit. So just be aware about your profitability level. If it's going to cost you $2 to acquire a customer, then you might break even, but you know you're going to get it at the back end or the upsell or however else you've structured stuff. So think about your costs, first of all, as a testing budget. See what the winners are at the front end. And then as you improve that, then concentrate on your costs at the back end, which is your conversion costs and you know the, the return on advertising spend or the ROAS as it's you know acronyms now. And we've already kind of touched upon this. Um, but what I would suggest for an initial budget is think about maybe 10 or 20 dollars per ad set. So if you can afford it, then that's really going to get you quite good volume. And you really need to nowadays let Facebook run for a minimum of three days, but you know, most likely now with all the algorithm changes and the iOS changes that we're currently talking about, seven days is really the period that Facebook is telling advertisers to actually have a better idea. I also know for a fact that the way that people behave on a Monday, you know, differs to the way they behave on a Saturday. So if you don't run a full seven day week, you might get some different results. You know, if you see some early results and it's Thursday, Friday, and you think this is an absolute winner, don't be surprised if on Saturday and Sunday and Monday your results go in the other direction because it happens. You know, we're all, you know, human beings and things happen. So when you test, think about a minimum three, but probably a seven to 10 day window. And as I said earlier about your targeting, trying to keep it, keep it broad uh, and learn in the first stage, um, which is why I said to you at the beginning, test, test and test. Your psychology should be, I'm going to run maybe one or two hundred dollars as a testing budget, which is going to buy you one campaign, you could run, let's say, two ad sets at $20. Yeah, so that's $40 a day over five days. You can quite quickly see how you need to allocate, you know, several hundred dollars just to get through that very first learning phase. You know, it could cost you a thousand dollars to get it dialed in. Just be aware of that. And kind of ending up on this because actually this is where it all starts. You know, look at what you're trying to do. Um, if you're going cold into a market and you're trying to go straight for a purchase, it will absolutely cost you more. Just be aware of that. Or you may actually have a two part strategy that says I want to drive traffic to get them to go look at the products go and look at, the, at what I'm selling. And I can then use a retargeting strategy in the knowledge that if I've got the Facebook pixel installed, which is vital. Ideally, you know, Google Analytics, because Facebook can't track everything now with iOS. Just make sure you understand where the data is coming from. But if you haven't got your pixel installed, you're going to lose. You know, it's as simple as that. You need to have that tracking ability. So your strategy could be I'm going to test the execution front end. I'm going to test getting lots of people to you know, look at the, the look at the page that I want them to buy from. But I'm not asking it to be a purchase until I know what's working at the front end. So your strategy actually might be a two part strategy. Um, now, there are many, many situations where if you've got a product that people just love the branding of and they love what's put in front of them, you're going to get some buyers. But if you've never done this before or you're still learning, you know, what product you're going to be selling at what price, just be clear about what your expectations are in terms of a overall strategy. So um, that's kind of a fairly quick run through. I'm just going to turn off the, the screen sharing now. Um, and provide I've hit the right button. I can come out of there. Yeah, you're fine. Cool. I I just was myself in mute because you know my neighbor decided to do the lawn <laughs> today. <laughs> they can come come of all on. the days they decided to do it today. Okay. I'm sorry. So there's there's a huge amount of detail there. Um, but really what I'm saying is right product, right, right price at the you know, the right place. Put yourself in the viewer's shoes, put yourself in the audience's shoes. But really, really look at the, look at your creative and look at how you're targeting people. They're kind of the, the, the big watchwords. Um, so we can talk about those and then I can actually give you some some clues as to about some, some little tweaks and some twists and ways to actually make your money go further. Yes, I mean, that, that was a very interesting, you know, uh, process and, and everything. 
Uh, one thing probably somebody here is going to be probably wondering is when you were into cost, you were talking about first, you were talking about testing for a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, and then you went to testing for two hundred dollars. So um, what do you mean by that? Uh, yeah. OK, so if we if we've already got some information about our product is, you know, a known concept and it's something which people we already know because uh, we know enough about, you know, our marketplace that it's likely to generate some sales. Then you can go straight into, you know, putting 10 or ideally $20 per ad set. And the reason that that's the case is because Facebook's got this thing called a learning period and it needs to get 50 what they call events. So if your campaign objective you set is a purchase event, a conversion event, then until you've got 50 purchases, Facebook will tell you it's still learning. It hasn't got enough data to base it upon. Now, if that's the objective and you're going straight to purchase conversion, you will need to put in minimum 10, but probably $20 per ad set. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, you don't get enough volume. If you are just testing out earlier stage than that and you put like a carousel ad together or you put like a short video together, then you can spend a lot less budget because what you're basically checking is the communication and the appeal of that. And are people watching your video through more than one second, three seconds? So it depends upon what stage you're at in terms of your sales process. How do we know when we are testing that we should now move into conversions? I hear the very different answers from very different people, but I'm curious to know what is your advice on this? How do we know that when you're testing, it's time to say, okay, it's not an, it's, we don't need to engage this one. We Now we need to go for the kill. When do we move? OK, um, so the ideal answer is have you have your have a spreadsheet and have your data points laid out so you know what your end profit is from your own you know, sale and, and, and product costing point of view. What can you afford as a as a point of cost of acquiring a customer? So if you know that you can only afford, you know, five dollars. Then very quickly, as long as you've got from the ad at the front end, you're you're measuring the metrics and you just do the numbers. Let's say you run a thousand, you know, you've reached a thousand people. So literally lay it out in a spreadsheet and think about the customer journey. You know, you've got a thousand people and you've got a cost to reach in those thousand people. You'll then have a percentage of link clicks. And ideally to a cold audience, you've got to be, you know, if you're at 0.05 percent number of link clicks, you already know it's going to be a you know a, a dog. It's gonna it's gonna fail. Ideally, cold audiences, it would be great to be above one percent for you know one percent click through rates. If you're a one to three percent, then you you already know that at the front end it's going to be quite good. There's no definitive answer to the percentage of link clicks because it depends on the profitability. So the first thing is have it laid out from your link click. You then got a number that's going to go to uh the the number of people that went to the landing page views and the number of people that went to onto purchase and obviously there's other steps in between like add to cart so as long as you've laid that out even before you've started running the ads you will have a pretty good idea about to how to measure it so let's just take your example cold cold you know not done this before but you know your cost of acquisition could be ten dollars so you know reach a thousand people get one percent click through and then of those you can see what we call the decay rate, how many people fall off at each stage. That will very quickly tell you, have I got enough people that are liking the ad to click through? So the front end is working OK. The ad itself is working OK. But when they get to the landing page, they don't actually buy. So is there something about the, you know, the way it's presented at the checkout that's not working? And, you know, often we find the ads OK, but the landing page has got nothing to do or the, what they get presented with actually is at dissonance or just looks very different to what they expected. So very quickly, you can actually make the decisions by using the data. That's the that's the real answer. But you've got to have you know, you've got to know your numbers and you've got to know those metrics. Coming back from there, then what you can do is if you don't go straight to purchase conversion and you use, for example, the landing page objective, then you're measuring traffic. And you can actually quite quickly get 50, you know, landing page views. Again, if you use the front end, even though they don't necessarily go on to buy because you've told Facebook, I want a landing page view. Effectively, what you're doing is checking the three phases. Is the front end ad working? 
you know, is the landing page and, you know, the first part of Add to Cart working? And then thirdly, are they actually going through the entire process of adding the car details and purchasing? So, you know, at the front end, um, you really need probably a thousand, two thousand views uh, of your ad to have any sense of data, you know, which might cost you, you might get it for $20 if it's cheap, but actually it might cost you $100. Unless you get through a thousand, two thousand impressions, that in the sea of the size of the audience of 2 million, 20 million, 200 million, it's minuscule. And the, my analogy here is it's like fly fishing in the Atlantic Ocean. You know, where your, where your fly ends up is a tiny, tiny part of that entire ocean. If you pick your, your, your you know, flying it up and go and cast it somewhere else, you might get a completely different result. So often advertisers that know what they're doing will actually what we call duplicate the ad set. So if you really, you know, you want the answer in the testing part, it's know your numbers. And in the front end, if you're not getting, you know, more than half a percentage you know, point link clicks, and you're not getting to more than one or 2000 views, you probably need to look at the creative again and look at the, you know, the quality of the ad. Um, and there's a whole set of other metrics, but but that's the real answer to the question. No, at what point it's an affordable ad to carry on working, which is why we run two or three different comparisons, because then you can just go, this one is head and shoulders above these two, therefore I'll just pause these two and let this run by reallocating the budget for another five days just to check that it is working. Does that answer your question on that? Yes, it did. I didn't know. I, I never thought about the 0 0.5, 0 0.1. I, I always go into the link clicks and how much is the conversion. I never thought about the, the, you know, the actual traffic that goes in there. Um, what I would say, though, and here's a, here's a kind of tiny kind of insight, is that if you're familiar with the ads platform and you go to the views of your data, use the drop down menus you've just talked about where you can actually change the views to be um, clicks um, clicks and performance, you know, performance and clicks, which will bring up a, a prescribed default list of metrics. Go to the bottom of the ad set. So I go to the bottom of the breakdown menu and click on custom. Then look through the menu and add into your view unique link clicks, okay? Because link clicks could be one person viewing twice yes. equals two link clicks. But if you go into unique link clicks, it kind of cuts out the multiplication. OK, so our, my acid measure is always unique link clicks and percentage through, not absolute link clicks. I, I check them both, but unique link clicks is, you know, for me, a, a more precise measure. Same with, you know, landing page views. If you've got your, your data tracking, you can actually look at unique um, unique events. And the second thing is look at your cost per, per impression, look at your cost per reach, because it could be, you know, your targeting is too narrow and you're just not getting enough bang for buck in the early stages. But yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, you, you just got to know what, if it costs you, let's face it, if it costs you a dollar to get a link click and you know that you're going to lose four out of five people from that link click to a purchase, it's going to cost you $5 for the purchase. Yeah, and, and that is a measure that I actually do. Actually, I, I when somebody gives me a dollar per clean click, I'm I'm fine. I know that I'm gonna get if I get five to seven for the purchase. Depends on the product, of course. Yeah, you know, I am like that. That is a good one. You know, yeah. uh, for me, it, it it is an indicator. You know, um, for someone. What sort of what sort of purchase value is that going through at? Uh, you see, it depends on what I'm running, right? Sometimes I can run a, a shirt for twenty dollars, but I'm going to make seven dollar profit. But I want to break even. I'm looking to break even because all I want to do is get him into the funnel and get him to make another purchase or get him into my email list. To me, if they if they break me even in that product, I'm fine. Now, when I go to jewelry, which I have more margins, I can spend ten, fifteen dollars and I still make another fifteen dollars, you know, in profit from that. But in those in that cases, I'm I'm looking for lead generation. I'm looking for actual money. So it depends on the product, and I have different products that I, I use now. You know, I am used going to run them. Like the other day, uh, a supplier gave me a discount on you know a certain shirt for six dollars and fifty cents. Uh, you know, printed, and uh, and I listed them for fourteen ninety nine, and I had a bug out, and I paid to get one free, and I still managed. And I only ran to get leads uh, for that yeah. deal. And, 
you know, I've got about a thousand emails out of that. I made about $200 profit, which in that case, I didn't really care. My retargeting became way cheaper after that long-term planning. But is you know, it's a strategy that you get more comfortable in doing as, you know, you progress. Um, and I mean, there is, I, I know, I, I know people in this industry that they even go for losing money in the first sale. Yeah. They, they don't mind losing $1, 2 $3 per the first sale. They used to get that email because they know that with their targeting, they're going to make that more, that, that more. Yeah. Uh, nothing more so it's, it's yeah no you're, you're right it comes back to the strategy so you're right you, you can go for a, a loss leader you know when we used to launch brands we would not expect to break even in 18 months because the amount of investment up front is so heavy but you've got you've got to have you know trust that it's gonna it's gonna pay back uh, i'm interested in what you said about strategy because the the other thing we used to do in retail is look at the average transactional value so you talked about you know what is the bump what is the buy the two for three you know what is the added value when they get to the checkout a bit like the old you know the amazon you know uh, most buyers when they buy this also buy that the best way of, i've ever seen of describing the upsell is you go to mcdonald's and you ask for your burger the very first question you're going to get asked is do you want fries with that do you want a meal and it's the upsell the upsell that we've heard so much about nowadays so it still works at the checkout. You're right. If if you break even on your main product, but you know that 20% are going to go for the incremental, that's where you make your profit. So the way you, you know, you, you absolutely hit the nail on there, whether you strategize your checkout is as important as the front end, because you may not, if you've just got one product at, you know, at $10, you may just break even. Whereas if you actually give someone, you know, an extra 30% value, you can actually make money more seriously on that. So, um, you know, come back to knowing your numbers. Um, if, if we've got time, if I can just share one more slide to go through yeah, some, time. Some, uh, some insights, then... Uh, we, have, gonna... we have quite a good number of people watching, but since it seems like it's 11 a.m. here in Texas. It's probably 9 a.m. in California. So I think people are just still not... I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> They're okay. not very awake. <laughs> okay, they can catch you on replay. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, so can you see my slide yes, now? Very right now yeah, okay, I'm so let's just talk about um, some of the ways that you can in, kind of improve your chances. Let's talk about some some audiences. Um, I'll start with what's called a custom audience. For, for those people that don't know, a custom audience it's a defined group of people. So, uh, sorry if it's noisy here; it's just starting to hail down on my windows. Um, yeah. So uh, custom audiences, uh, let's say you are uh, going to choose to run a strategy where you're getting loads of people for kind of equal cost on your break even to get them to, you know, uh, to get into the cart. Then you can build a custom audience based upon the pixel tracking to retarget people, you know, so you can actually go into the audiences on Facebook after you run the first phase and you can build a custom audience of all the people that visited and you choose the website URL that you that you're referencing and you can very quickly get 100 people to that to that uh, particular URL. So you can build a custom audience from that URL. That's why the pixel really must be installed at each stage. The complication we faced in the last month since the latest changes to the platform is that Facebook itself is now limiting uh, what's called eight events. So it's harder and harder for e-commerce, but obviously purchase is the most valuable event to measure. You know, the add to the cart might be the, you know, the second or the third. So be very aware nowadays that technically speaking, there's an extra step to do in building your audiences from the pixel because you are limited to how much tracking can be done. Um, once you've got buyers, then up, upload your database list. This is gold because, you know, Assuming that Facebook might match 60, 65, maybe 70 percent of email addresses, if you uploaded a database list of a thousand buyers, you might be able to easily um, target those 500, 600 people by uploading a customer audience, which is a database list. Uh, you could, if you're running ads from the page and you're doing a lot of activity, you can target specific people that are highly engaged with any ad or any post on your page, or if you've got a big page and you've got 10,000 followers, you can target those because they're already familiar with you. So this is where the testing is important. Because if you've got something that you that you know you can sell to people that are already aware of you, then you can target very specifically. Uh, 
Uh, and we mentioned video views, and that's just a mechanism to see if your communication is working, if, if video is an appropriate format for you. The key thing is once you've built your custom audiences, you can then take any of those custom audiences and you click a couple of buttons in the audience builder and you create a lookalike. And for anyone listening in that doesn't know what a lookalike is, it takes that, that custom as a sample, let's call it a thousand people in that custom audience. And if you build a lookalike and chose USA as an audience, and you chose the metric which says 1%, which is always the best quality measure because it's more accurate, that will take that thousand people in that custom audience and it will instantly give you a audience size of currently 2.4 million of people like that. That's why it's called a lookalike. So it takes your sample of a thousand, explodes it out to 2.4 so that next time, you know, or the next immediate phase, you can run an audience to a lookalike audience in the knowledge that these people are going to increase your probability of actually getting to the right people. So, um, you know, that's a way of keeping keeping your testing quite focused. It also means, you know, you end up keeping your money quite tight as well. Um, so there's a couple of examples there. I'm going to stop screen sharing before we go mad looking at each other. Um, so is, is there anything in that you kind of want to pick up on or, or, you know, from your experience, you know, what you've done with your audiences? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I got distracted. What? I said, is there anything that you want to add to that in terms of what you've learned from your audiences, which any, I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> uh, what have I you mean, found most successful? I, I mean, yes. I mean, actually, I, I was I was teaching uh, yesterday actually um, a class on lead generation, and actually I was telling exactly the same thing you were saying, right? That getting an email uh, can help you go take all that information and put them into Facebook and ask for Facebook to create a lookalike audience, so that it could be a lot easier to retarget customers that are in the same niche and the same interests, and uh, it, it will lower your cost. Um, which is, is something you know that we we, we usually do, right? Like if we want to um, video, video on Facebook is also another great great deal, right? It's like anybody yeah. who watches a video on my Facebook page, uh, we can tell Facebook, hey, anybody who watched ten seconds of this video, put an ad in front of them, and anybody who looks like that same audience also put an ad in front of them. So it's it's a great way to use the yeah. data that you have already accumulated uh to stop yeah. the guessing of who is out there you know looking to buy yeah um, video, course, video is still the most you know cost effective way to do several things as you quite rightly said you can you know run a, a 30 second video and you can you can actually go back and create an audience based upon those that have watched all of it half of it 25 percent of it it also helps you understand whether, you, whether your communication is working well because if you don't have that hook up front in the creative to keep their attention you'll you'll see your video views are just falling off of a cliff really really quickly so that will inform you actually it's my hook at the beginning i need to change it's the first image that i need to change it's you know it will tell you a lot that's a learning and the second thing is you quite rightly said you can then take you know all the people that watch three seconds ten seconds or more 50% and you can create your lookalike if you've got, you know, you can go as low as a hundred, but I prefer to keep it to a thousand because it's just more robust. It's just a, a bigger sample size. Um, so don't, don't be afraid to experiment is, is key. Um, if we want to a thousand what? Uh, like a thousand views. Oh, okay. It's a bit like doing research. If you ask 10 people, you know, in a survey, you can you can't rely upon it you ask a hundred people it's a bit better you ask a thousand people it's more reliable yeah like video views <laughs> yeah yeah well don't yeah like we have uh, a hundred people that are the diverse but 90 percent is this is, isn't the same side of the of the equation it's like 90 percent of the people said this out of yeah 10 people that we interview and you know and nine yeah. actually lean to that category <laughs> yeah but, so yeah. <laughs> it, it, you know if you can you know run run a video until you've got a thousand views gives you you know a, a more you know a more robust number to, to to base it upon um the other kind of the big thing i, I really want to share is something called dynamic ads which not everyone will understand but i'd like yeah. to kind of just share some some learning because it is a really really cost-effective way to test and to do the early stage campaign work um so in a nutshell um when building an ad out in facebook 
um, you actually get to choose uh, whether you want to switch the button to create a dynamic ad. Now, all that means is traditionally you'd build one campaign with, as I said earlier, maybe two or three different audiences in the ad set, and then you'd build the ad itself. So if you built one image ad, yeah, with one copy, then that's called one ad. If you change the copy or you change the image, then that's the second ad. So whatever money you're spending is going to be split between the two different ads. So just imagine that you want to run five different ads because you just don't know which image, which copy headline, which call to action is going to be most you know, effective. So your dollar spend is going to be diluted across five ads for that $20 in the ad set. Makes sense. So it's four dollars each, you know, if, if we use the straight line. If you choose the option to run dynamic ad. In one ad, you can choose and it's all there, easy to pick. Five different copy text, five different headlines, five different call to action buttons and 10 images or 10 creatives. That goes into the auto program on Facebook as one ad. It's called a dynamic ad. What happens is as soon as that money gets started to be pushed out and Facebook starts sending the ad out back to my acronym and at the top format and placement, depending upon where Facebook thinks your audience is, it will use any combination of that 10, 5, 5 and 5 to get the best result. And then once it's been running for a couple of days, you can actually break down the results inside the ad manager to see where Facebook spent the money. And you might find really quickly that 50 percent of the of the, of the, you know, the number of impressions has been put against this particular image. And it may have only spent, you know, 20 percent on another one, 20 percent. And you might find it's hardly spent any dollars on three of those images. It's smart enough to know where it's more likely to get a result because based upon your objective, if, you, if you've asked it for a purchase, it will quickly find out whether people are responding to the ad. So Facebook does that work for you. You don't need to run five different copy ads. You don't need to run 10 different images. You can let Facebook do the hard work. So if you absolutely no idea what's going to work and I, and I did this, I've been doing this on a campaign for for four months and what? <laughs> I can tell you this right now, whatever ad you think is going to be the best and going to be the winner. It's not always as easy to guess what the response is going to be, you know, and I've kind of put ads into the dynamic thing and gone, well, this is definitely going to be the winning creative. And you know what? It's bombed or the money's not been spent against it. So go in and, and explore and look at dynamic ad creation, because what you can also do in those 10 different images is you can mix a static ad and at a video ad, which again, back to where do people see it? Is it a right hand column ad? Is it a newsfeed ad? Does it go into Instagram stories, which is a, you know, a, a different format? It will mix all those combinations up and distribute to get the best result. So if you really want to get, you know, really good bang for buck by testing, then look at choosing dynamic ads as a way of very early you know, analysis, very early understanding about what might work better than something else. Um, takes a bit of time to, to kind of get your head around it, but it's actually quite easy to uh, to implement. And, uh, you know, rather than actually worrying about running five or 10 different ads in detail, it just means that, you know, it's going to do a lot of the legwork for you. Interesting. Uh, I mean, I, I, I have heard of them. I never tried them. Um, you actually explain them quite easily now. Uh, uh, I have been I have been told to do them. I, I, I it's one of those ads that I have always say I need, I need to learn how to do them better, and I I will try them, but I never get around because what I what I'm doing <laughs> is working. That you know that you're yeah. like in and but when yeah. you put it that way, I I didn't I didn't think it would go into that as smart of an analysis, you know, that to, yeah. for Facebook to be that is smart and to be looking for combinations. Um, the yeah. way it was explained to me was way more complex than that. And um, and I was like, yeah, it, it is. It, it's buried in the algorithm. So all I can say is, you know, have something that's working or something that you think is going to going to work and then just duplicate it. And in the duplicated thing, 
change it and test that one so they run side by side and test dynamic creative versus traditional yeah because i, 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 I can't I tell you it's going to work way. better the one i do is what i have the ads and then they have the four the four or five different versions of it that's what i do you know the four or five different versions and then i let my facebook do you know distribute the money you know in those five different sets and uh, and that worked great right for me i didn't know dynamic was actually that done for you uh if i had known it that it was that simple i would have because it's complicated to make five different acts and you know and yeah which for the best but if they're going to give you now five five ten and they're going to be yeah. for you the combination yeah it's like having 40 or yeah. more you, ads. you absolutely do not have to yeah because you don't have to think about 20 different combinations yeah you literally pick your images or your little video snippets and then you pick your headlines I mean, let's face it, for e-com, you don't need five different buttons, you know, because no, you it's going to be going to be a purchase button, you know, that's fine. Um, so you don't have to you know, worry too much. So, again, it's just a way to test quite easily without doing a lot of the legwork yourself. Um, I'm not saying it's always going to work. If you've got a winner, don't change it. You know, <laughs> I'm not telling you to change it. I'm just saying, try it, just test it. It might give you a different result. And, you know, back to the duplication, sometimes ad campaigns wear out, you have to, you know, refresh the creative. So it might be that your, you know, your product's a winner, but if you've been running it for six months and you suddenly see that, you know, your results are starting to fall off, you might just need to refresh the creative. Um, so that's the other key thing as well. You know, don't be afraid to keep refreshing it. And I always, you know, tend to duplicate because you don't lose what you've got then, you know, you actually can keep that momentum going. So, you know, there, there's some kind of, you know, key things, um, a couple of tiny little insights nowadays, um, the attribution, the time window that, that Facebook is using. Um, it used to be that we could quite, you know, tightly target and get results within a day. That's why I'm saying now you need to think about it as a, you know, as a seven to to 14 day period, um, you won't get clarity after 24 hours. You know, you need to let it run for several days. Um, and, and that's why, you know, the kind of the very rough guidelines about a thousand, 2000 impressions. If you run it for 200 impressions and you're not getting a result, it's probably far too early to kill it. I'm not saying that it won't, you know, it won't be a dog, but you know, just hold your breath. And sometimes it's the hardest thing for us as, as people that run ads is not, not to look at it for eight hours. You know, it's, it's so difficult. I've got to go and check it. I've got to go and check it. Every <laughs> time you tweak it, it gets put back into ad approval. So don't tweak something, duplicate it. If you, if you've made a mistake, um, but it's only a tiny thing, but it's really driving you crazy, you know, duplicate it and change the one that you're duplicating and then let that go through ad approval. Otherwise everything gets put to the back of the queue. So, you know, you could be in delay for 24 hours. It's, it's typically yeah, you know, 12 forever. I, I set up an ad the other day saying that in 24 hours we go live and they did it like two hours before the event. And I'm like, that ad is now outdated <laughs> and now it's running. It's like they're taking, so you have to start being more proactive and probably create your ads a little ahead of time and put a, a start yeah. date when they need to start running or something because lately they have been really really slow uh yeah. a lot of, yeah what you said is really really important because a lot of people kind of uh, ask me um will it start running um as soon as it's been approved and the short answer is do what you said which is put the start date three days in advance and it's always good to put the ad together and put it up for approval before it starts to run because it might get rejected you know ad policies are really really difficult to navigate such a lot of gray areas um so put it up ahead of time if you can if you're ready and get it through the approval process because then you can always pull forward the start date if you're ready to go but a lot of people expect results within 24 hours and they get frustrated because yeah. they're still sat sat in ad approval two years so ago you could go live in, in minutes it's like ad boom it's start it's already showing and lately you know all these new regulations they have all these check checking to see you're in compliance with the selling and you know the image is not going to be political blah 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 it takes forever to get approved i don't know if that's yeah. what's happening to me because it's uh you know or anybody else but lately i i haven't been approved for nothing in less than 10 hours yeah, yeah it's it, it's months. exceptional now now yeah it is exceptional nowadays to get approval quicker than that um unless you're a very well established 
high quality provider. And, you know, there are a lot of hidden metrics inside the ads manager, which is your quality measure. So if you have a winning ad and you use the same ad, you can copy the ad ID. Let's say you've got a winning creative ad, you know, and you can take that ad ID and you can then take take that into a new campaign to a different audience, for example, it will bring along with it what's called the social proof. So if you've got an ad that's been performing well and you've got, you know, 50 likes on it or some form of, you know, engagement that's positive, it means that the ad quality is being tracked more effectively. Facebook reward you by your ad costs being lower to reach people if it's in the higher level of what they perceive is a quality ad, which is why so many crappy ads get not only rejected, but it costs more money and they get hardly any reach. People sometimes say, well, my, why aren't Facebook spending my dollars? And it could be that the quality of the ad is just perceived by the algorithm as being poor. So don't be afraid to take something that's already got good traction and use the ad ID to duplicate it because it actually will be, you'll get a quicker approval, you'll get a quicker start on it, which is also why I keep coming back to duplicating because if you've got something and you duplicate it that's already been approved, it will get approved quicker. It's only when yeah, you change. I, I, I have gotten sometimes ads that Facebook says the quality is the quality of targeting is bad and they give you the bad score in there. But I'm making money on that. And I'm like Yeah, the very crude, the very crude measures, the below you know, average, so the average and the above average. I, um, I, oh. I did it wrong, but I know I'm being screwed. I know I'm being charged on a very high for the CPM, very high for the conversion costs. I mean I, I know I'm being executed. But it just makes sense to continue running. But most of the cases, when they tell me it's a very bad score, I kill it. it you know, it's I know it's just gonna get worse. They they don't like the ad. They don't like the way it's performing. They don't like the behavior that they get the people that are seeing it are having towards it. So I end up killing it. But sometimes it's like, okay, yeah. Uh, even though you know it's costing me ten dollars to convert, I'm making twenty, thirty dollars profit here. I don't care. E you know, if I only get one click out of a thousand, uh, and that thousand, you know, that click makes the purchase, I am willing to keep on going in that one. So yeah, that uh, makes sense. Uh, make my decisions based on you know have have better judgment when it comes to those things, right? Yeah. All, all I'm saying is keep an eye on something called account quality. Um, yeah. So inside the ads manager, keep checking the high level metrics because if you run if you run twenty ads and if fifteen out of those twenty ads is you know considered as poor quality on the metrics that that Facebook will will never give the detail on, then it will affect your overall ad account okay and that's why ad accounts sometimes you know get red flags and get shut down because if they continually are perceived as poor quality for the platform then it just it will just be a pain in the ass it really is so just keep an eye on the account quality and sometimes do you know what best advice is if you've had ads that have been rejected and you've got 20 ads in your ad account that have been rejected best thing to do is delete them get rid of them because otherwise they're little red flags on your account. So if you are habitually getting ads rejected, even if you're then tweaking them and they're getting approved, be aware it's all contributing to the ad account quality and therefore be mindful of what the impact could be further down the road. That's the yeah. only thing, you know, best advice really. Keep an eye on the quality. Definitely. Okay, um, so, it, it, you know, that's kind of a quick run through. Um, as I say, there's loads of different elements to that. Uh, my, my key overall watchword is think about it as a test phase, think about a test allocation and be smart with the way that you can try things out. Um, and, you know, the broader you start, then you could argue it's going to take longer to get a result. Um, but know your metrics, know your metrics. There's the, There's other things around that. If you're really, really new to this, um, then, you know, ask people for recommendations. If you ever want to hire an agency, you know, if you decided that actually it's within your affordability and your budget, then don't just go with anyone that offers services that are free of charge because they're likely to have no evidence. They're likely to look for a, for a, you know, a case study. Very few times have I ever seen anyone offer free ad service unless it's linked to percentage of sales, which some people use and that's absolutely fine but only use trusted partners that have been recommended by other users or someone that you've got some personal, you know, understanding about their credentials. You know, um, it's, it's, it's a minefield out there and I'm not dissing anybody 
you know um i've been doing advertising for total like 30 years but i've personally been running facebook ads for you know several years now and i had to go through a massive learning curve and i'd be lying to you if i said i knew everything about it before i started so just be aware if you choose to use an ad partner it sometimes is worth paying extra for people that really do live and breathe this and, and my advice to kind of your listeners in particular is e-commerce is a specialism i don't care what people say selling products through facebook and google ads and youtube even which are selling products through e-com you've got to know how those ads which formats which kind of ways to run the placements is better than other people that might only have experience running ads for sending people to a webinar for a coach so please 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 do your homework again you know ask people for recommendations in groups that's generally the best way to do that i mean i'm always referring people to to specialists because i'll put my hand up to say do you know what i don't normally run for that category therefore i don't think i would add, add enough value but let me introduce you to a business or an agency or an individual that absolutely can kill this you know and, and you know go go with experience awesome so Rob, I want to thank you so much for uh, your valuable content, guys. You want to, ladies, you want to uh, follow uh, Rob. Uh, that is his Facebook profile. It's also in the in, in the description of the, of every single one of the live videos that we have. We were casting in seven groups and and YouTube. So the the link is in there. Uh, you go to his profile. He will have a, a link where you can find any information about what how he can help you and learn more about what he you know what he does. Uh, Rob, it, this has been extremely informative. Um, I mean, I I learned I learned quite a lot just by you know listening to you. Um, do you have any last thing you want to say before we wrap up? Uh, yeah, um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go into Ads Manager and play around with it. Honestly, don't set the campaign to run live. Go in and spend some time looking at how each of the elements work. Look at what you're going to be tracking. You can't break it, you know, as long as you're not pushing the, you know, the, the, the start button, which is into ad approval and you're spending the money, then take your time. There's, there's ways to set drafts up. So play around with it and learn how to get the most out of it before you actually put, you know, a hundred dollars down, a thousand dollars down. That's the best thing. You know, it's like computers to a degree. We used to be frightened of using them because we thought we would break something. You can't break anything in the ads platform if all you're doing is getting to navigate and look away way around, you know, and you know, look for look for a specialism. That's the last thing I would say. Look for people that really know what they're doing. Okay. It's been great to, to join you. I hope that's helped. It helped a lot. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Uh, the replays are available as soon as this thing is over. I mean, you can play the replay, you know, whenever you guys want to. Uh, it's going to be on live on, you know, on, on YouTube for you to watch anytime you want. Uh, Rob, thank you so much for all your time. I truly yeah, appreciate pleasure. it. And thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks for watching.